Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to draw exponential graphs. Now you would notice from all the other graphs, exponential is the easiest. The reason being, there is not a big difference between grade 10 and grade 11 exponential graphs. Now from grade 10, we had learned the following table. We had learned that our asymptote Okay. When I have information, it is linked to my asymptote. Now, what is my asymptote? My asymptote is Q. Now, if the graph is a positive graph, it's going to be on the top of the asymptote. And if it's negative, it's going to be at the bottom of the asymptote. If the number attached to the exponent is a whole number or greater than 1, then I am on my right hand side but if it is between 0 and 1 so basically a fraction then I am going to be on my left hand side when I'm talking of fractions I'm talking of standard fractions not mixed not improper fractions then I am on my left hand side when I say I'm on my left hand side I'm referring to the starting point of the graph so if it's starting on my left like that or if it's starting on the right hand side then we are talking of those points. Now there were few rules that in grade 10 we had emphasized. One of the rules was that always make sure that your exponent the power is positive. By making it positive you don't do careless mistakes because this year this table works with positive exponents because a positive exponent when you have a negative exponent and you change it to a positive exponent you will realize hey but the base is actually a fraction let's take the example let's take the following example if I got 2 to the power of minus x if I make it a positive exponent it's half to the power of x which means then I am lying in this quadrant so you must make sure that you have that all your exponents are positive. Now the drawing set is very much the same. You are going to draw Q, your asymptote, y is equal to Q. Number two, you are going to do x intercept and you are going to do y intercept. Sometimes you do not get both, sometimes you only get x intercept, sometimes you only get y intercept. So you try and you see if it is there, you do it. If you see it is not passing, you do not calculate it. Now let us draw the following graph. We're going to start with y is equal to minus 4. That is my asymptote. Now, how do we do the x-intercept? x-intercept means y is equal to 0. This is where all your exponential rules come in. So we have 0 is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 2 minus 4. Bring my 4 over. I've got 4 is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 2. Now we're going to get the same base. So we have 2 to the power 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 2. Cancel my bases. So I have 2 is equal to x minus 2. And if you solve, x is equal to 4. So what is my coordinate? I can clearly see that y is 0. So my coordinate is 4 and 0. Then we're going to do the y-intercept. y-intercept x is equal to 0. So I have y is equal to 2, 0 minus 2, minus 4. So we have y is equal to minus 3 and 3 over 4. My coordinate is x is equal to 0 and y is minus 3 and 3 over 4. You can write it as a decimal if that is easier for you to draw. If that is easier for you to draw, you can write 0 and minus 3, 75. Now let's draw the graph. What is our asymptote? Our asymptote is y is equal to minus 4. Then, I know my coordinates are 4 and 0. And then it is 0 and minus 3 and 3 and a quarter. So that's like around here. Now we know it is a 
whole number and it is positive. So I am on top of my asymptote and I am going to start from the right and there is your graph. I find grade 11 exponent graphs much easier than grade 10 because there is more to work with it is easier for me it just works easier. Thank you for watching.